Hello my dear Forex students, Eric Query here. Welcome to the Liveversity Forex Trading Course Lecture 3. In this lecture, we are going to look at what you need as a Forex trader in order to succeed. First, we are going to look at the tools that you need in your trading toolbox to become a successful trader even as you begin your foreign currency trading journey. Secondly, we shall look at the MetaTrader 4 and 5. Those are the major trading platforms we use. And then we shall look at the types of charts and every charting tool there is in order to help you succeed in your foreign currency trading journey. Before we go to lecture 3, let us just revisit our Liveversity Forex trading timetable so that we are on the same page. According to our Liveversity Forex trading timetable, as you can see in the screen, we shall look at part 1 inside a Forex trader's toolbox. Secondly, we shall look at introduction to MetaTrader 4 and 5. Part 3, we shall look at opening a demo account. Part 4, we shall look at types of trends, charts and rules of plotting. Part 5, we shall look at types of orders. And then lastly, part 6, we shall look at order execution. Without wasting much of your time, let's just head over to part 1 of lecture 3. And part 1 is basically a topic I titled Inside a Forex Trader's Toolbox. You need to know what you need in your toolbox as a foreign currency trader in order to succeed in your foreign currency trading journey. As you all know, tools are designed to make work easier and workers more productive. So just like Amazon, as a Forex trader, you also need valuable tools in your trading toolbox in order to succeed in your foreign currency trading journey. Before I choose any tool to put in my toolbox as a trader, my tool must be able to satisfy three main conditions. And as you can see in the screen, the first condition is the tool used should help to define the direction of the trend. This is very important. As a foreign currency trader, you need to be able to define the direction of a trend. Is it a downtrend? Is it an uptrend? Or is the market non-trending or moving sideways? If the tool cannot define the direction of the trend, then it is not a valuable tool to be in your trader's toolbox. Secondly, the tool should help to define the risk. Very important. Before you open any trading position, you need to be able to determine how much you are willing to lose should the market revert opposite to the position you had opened. And my tool of choice should be able to help me define the direction of the trend first and secondly, define my risk so that I can know the amount of money I'm willing to lose and where I'm going to place my stop loss in order to minimize losses. And should I lose, unfortunately, I can be able to quantify my loss in order for me not to be broken or not to be overcome by emotions or to have my account wiped out. Thirdly, your tool of choice should be unambiguous. A tool that is ambiguous will not be able to help you define the direction of the trend, neither will it help you to define the risk. So in my toolbox, I ensure I include tools that are able to define the trend and the risk. And by defining the trend and the risk, my tool is unambiguous. It becomes unambiguous. An ambiguous tool will be able to help me in order for me to maximize on making profit because we will be able to know the direction of the trend and hence the direction of the market. And most importantly, you can define the risk and be able to know how much you are willing to lose should the market revert opposite to the position you had opened. There are several tools I use in my trader's toolbox. Some of them are ambiguous, some of them are unambiguous, some of them help me define the direction of the trend, some of them do not, some of them help me define the risk, some of them do not. Why am I using them even though they cannot define the direction of the trend, neither can they define my risk? I use them as secondary trading tools. And I'll disclose to you some of the tools that I use as secondary trading tools and then later I reveal to you the main tools I use as my primary trading tools because they are able to fulfill all the three conditions that I have listed as you can see in the screen. 
The first tool that I usually use are uh, Forex New Stroke Fundamental Analysis. Uh, just to refresh your memory, fundamental analysis is the use of news to speculate the direction of the market. News are very important. I also check out news on a daily basis. We shall revisit this topic, the fundamental analysis topic, later on in uh, an upcoming lecture. And I will be able to reveal to you some of the sources where I get my news. As you can see in the screen, personally, I use websites like Forex Factory. We shall revisit that in the next lecture, and I will be able to take you to Forex Factory, Forex Street, Baby Pips, and much more. Uh, I usually use news as a secondary trading tool. Why? Because news to me, uh, they are not able to define the direction of the trend. And then secondly, they cannot help me to define my risk. So they are ambiguous. They are not unambiguous. The tool I'm looking for is a tool that is unambiguous. And by being unambiguous, I mean it can help me define the direction of the trend and most importantly, define the risk. And then secondly, the second tool I use is price action. That is the movement of the price. Let me just take you over to the market in order for you to see what I mean. As you can see, I'm live in the market. This is my MetaTrader 5 demo account. As you can see, price action, the green candle is forming right away at uh, this time frame. And by observing the price action, the up and down movement of the price, you can also determine... Uh, the direction of the trend. You can also determine whether you want to buy or to sell. You can observe the market and see. For example, uh, in my chart, as you can see, I have the candles. I use the Japanese candlesticks. And as you can see now, a green candle is forming. And according to my chart, a green candle represents a bullish force or uh, there's a lot of buying pressure. So if you, I was to enter into the market following price action, I'll definitely buy because I can see there have been around five consecutive green candles and the price as we speak is above the blue line and my blue line is the 200 hour moving average. That is simply an indicator for me to buy. But price action, is it an ambiguous or an unambiguous tool. Price action uh, is like the universal language. If there is one thing all Forex participants can agree on, it is the price. Price action does not lie. Whatever I can observe in this chart is the same thing a person in the United States, a person in England, a person in Zurich is able to observe the same thing. So price action does not lie. It's the same. As long as we are using MetaTrader 4, or MetaTrader 5 and the currency pair that is open on the screen is the Euro USD and then the price is the same thing. But I do not use price action as my primary trading tool in my toolbox. So why don't I use price action as my primary trading tool? Price action has its limits as you can see in the screen. The current price momentum, whether it goes up or down, is important, but as far as its usefulness for trading, it has its limit. Many new traders will watch at the price action and base their trading decisions simply on the movement. If the price is going up, they will buy. If, if the price is going down, they will sell. Moreover, the more momentum there is in a specific direction, the more excited the trader will be about jumping on the bandwagon. I used to do this. I could just observe price action and because right away I can see a green candle has formed, I simply jump into the market and buy and then immediately the market reverses opposite to my position and I used to burn out a lot of money. But uh, later on I came to learn from my mentor that price action should not be used as a primary trading tool. First, because it does not define the direction of the trend. Secondly, it does not help me to define risk. Those are the most important points that I follow when choosing a trading tool that I should include in my trading toolbox. But I still use price action as a secondary trading tool uh, because price action can also help me be able to substantiate the news that uh, my primary trading tools are giving me. So uh, price action is a good tool and it is a universal tool and uh, many inexperienced traders will try to use that will you will watch a signal somebody says buy because a green candle has formed uh, somewhere or a bullish candle or sell because a bearish candle has formed somewhere and then you end up being burned uh, and uh, that is a very bad thing i used to 
do that sometimes i used to just jump on the bandwagon and then uh, sometimes it could work out on many occasions uh, the price action decision didn't work out and uh, it could leave me confused and sad uh, losing money uh, when i came to learn that i should use it as a secondary trading tool everything changed from my experience price action just tells me the price now it does not tell me at what price level i am wrong it does not tell me where i should put my stop loss it does not reveal to me when the price momentum will fade or reverse it doesn't define risk either what's more it does not tell me at what price i should be bullish or bearish as a result price momentum stock action is ambiguous i use it as a secondary trading tool not as a primary trading tool and then the third set of tools that i have these are technical analysis tools i use them as my primary trading tools there are very many technical analysis tools but three of my best are the moving average the trend lines and remembered lines and then lastly the fibonacci retracements those are three of my best as you can see in the screen moving averages trend lines and remembered lines and then fibonacci retracements i use these three technical trading tools because one they help me to define the direction of the trend very important to me secondly they help to define risk and then thirdly they are unambiguous so those are the most important tools I really want you to include in your trader's toolbox. And basically the Liveversity Forex trading course will disclose you to these three most important technical analysis tools. Let's just head over to my chat uh, for me to give you a sneak preview of how to use these tools. As you can see in my chat, I have this green line. This is the 100 hour moving average. And then the blue line, this is the the 200 hour moving average i sketched these uh, uh, moving averages on my chart to help me define the direction of the trend and as a rule of the thumb as you'll come to learn my first tool the moving average when the price goes below any moving average line it is an indicator to sell and as you can see evidently this is my 100 hour moving average and when the price hit below the 100 hour moving average it was very hard for the price to go above the moving hour average it kept going lower and lower so when the price is below the moving average line it's clearly an indication for you to be able to sell and secondly the blue line here is the 200 hour moving average as you can see my 200 hour moving average acted as a support the price could not drop any lower than the 200 hour moving average and if i was now to trade based on moving average i'll be able to know automatically that the 100 hour moving average will act as resistance and then the 200 hour moving average will act as support so when the price moves closer to the 100 hour moving average i'm definitely able to go short and place my stop loss slightly above the moving hour average in order to minimize my losses uh, you will find that the market will the price will come and hit on the 100 hour moving average and start dropping so if i go short or sell at that position i'll immediately be making profit it may not go that way all the time the price may decide to break the 100 hour moving average and when the 100 hour moving average is broken and the price is now above the 100 hour moving average i'll definitely know it's time to buy and definitely i'll be stopped out by a small loss because of the stop loss i'll have placed above the 100 hour moving average from there i can buy because once the price is there is uh, above the 100 hour moving average then it will definitely be a time to buy that is how i use the moving hour average and then i have the trend lines i as you can see on the medium bar here uh, this uh, the slanting line is the trend line you can sketch a trend line i'll show you how to sketch a trend line later on i'll also show you how to sketch a moving average line in your chart later on as you'll come to learn later when drawing trend lines you need to connect the higher lows and the lower highs when sketching a trend line i simply come to my menu bar the slanting line i tap on the slanting line it says draw a trend line as you can see i can sketch a trend line over here and just slide my mouse the trend line will start appearing and connect my 
my lower highs up to there definitely that is uh, definitely that is my trend line and uh, there are different types of trend lines i'll be able to disclose to you the different types of trend lines later on this is now my trend line as you can see when the price hits the trend line it bounces high just like the moving average when the price is above a moving average it's an indication to buy as you can see this is uh, an ascending trend line so uh, when an ascending trend line is broken it is a time to sell and when an ascending trend line is touched and then the price bounces high it's time to buy so when the price is above the trend line you buy when it is below the trend line you sell as you can see when the trend line was broken then it was a time to sell all the way down and those who sold at this point definitely made a catch and then my last but not least tool is the fibonacci on the menu bar as you can see the f the Fibonacci retracement pattern is drawn just like the trend line, but as opposed to the trend line, you connect the lowest point with the highest point. So, for instance, uh, uh, here, as you can see, the market, the price was dropping, so I'll connect the highest point. This uh, is definitely here, and then just slide to the lowest point, which is uh, definitely here as you can see there are different types of fibonacci levels we have zero and then we have 23.8 38.2 uh, coincidentally 38.2 is uh, is coinciding with my 100 hour moving average line as you can see these tools relate 38.2 and then we have 50 percent then 61.8 up to a hundred percent i'll be able to disclose to you the science behind the fibonacci tool and how you can use it in order for you to make a catch in the market as you can see uh, from my 100 hour moving average or 38.2 level of fibonacci the price could not break up it kept going low and as you can see at zero percent the price could not go any lower it bounced off the zero percent and has been going up since then it has broken through 23.6 percent let me just draw a horizontal line at 23.6 and then it has kept going up so my speculation is that the price will keep going up and then uh, 38.2 a Fibonacci level or my 100 hour moving average will act as a point of resistance where the price will again start coming lower and lower. The 38.2 may be broken or the 100 hour moving average line may be broken and from there I'll know clearly it is the time to buy. Once the price steps below the moving average line, if it's the 100 hour moving average line, I'll know that it's time to sell. So it has helped me to define the trend. And as you can see, when the price reached the 100 hour moving average line, it kept dropping. So that was a clear indication that it is time to sell. And as you can see, the, Fibon uh, the Fibonacci level as well, when the price went below 38.2 level, it was an indicator that it was a time to sell and the price has been going low. So if I was to sell, then I will place a stop loss slightly above the 38.2 level or slightly above the 100 hour moving average. As you can see, uh, the Fibonacci and the moving averages have helped me to define first the direction of the trend and secondly to define my risk. That is where I will put my stop loss. And as you can see, the third tool, the trend line, as the price usually uh, came down and touched the trend line, it bounced off and kept going high. So that was an indication for me to buy. And when the price broke the trend line, it kept going low. So below the trend line, that is a call for me to be able to sell. So if I was to sell at this point, then I'll be able to put my stop loss slightly above the trend line in order to minimize my risk. As you can see, the trend line has helped me to not only define the direction of the trend, but also to be able to define my risk. 
those are the most important tools I use as a trader and they have never disappointed me since the time I met my mentor that is uh, around in uh, 2017 when I met my mentor in Israel these tools have worked for me consistently to remain in the market to make decent profit in the market that is why I'm here to share with you everything there is for you to know as we go forward part two we shall look at the introduction to MetaTrader 4 and 5 and as you all know MetaTrader 4 and 5 is our trading software so as you can see in the interface this is basically our trading software there is nothing much to introduce you to this is what you are talking about the MetaTrader 4 and 5 for those on Android or on iOS you can download the MetaTrader 4 and 5 uh, app from your Google Play Store or iOS Store and you can also be able to sketch trend lines you can sketch uh, the Fibonacci and the moving averages using the MetaTrader 4 and 5 on your smartphone but basically this is what we have as our MetaTrader 4 and 5 tool this is the MetaTrader 5 I'm using in MetaTrader 5 or 4, you'll have basically currency pairs here, Euro USD, Great Britain Pound USD, and much more. We trade the currency pairs. That is what we do as Forex traders. And we'll need this tool. It is a very handy tool. With this trading tool, you can be able to open a new order. As you can see on our menu bar, we have different uh, tools on the file. We have basically everything you need. You can save a picture. For example, I can save this chart and then you can uh, withdraw, deposit, withdraw. In opening an account, you can you simply come to file. You head over to file, open your account. You will be uh, prompted to find your broker, whichever broker you are using. And then you will be needed to insert your email address. After putting your email address, you will be able to uh, set a password and then uh, some brokers uh, require you to put your telephone number some of them will require you to uh, to identify yourself by putting your identification card number whichever country you come from or your passport number and much more once your email has been verified and your telephone number has been verified your account will be opened and you can now deposit funds so in depositing funds we do it over here a file and then we come to deposit after opening an account you can you deposit the money you want to trade if i'm deciding to invest for instance a thousand dollars i deposit over here using either a visa card a mastercard or whichever card paypal using skrill and much more there are very many methods you can deposit in order for you to start trading i'll be able to reveal to you more of these methods and some of the brokers best brokers i use so that you can use some of those brokers to open your account to deposit your account uh, to deposit funds in your account and then lastly to withdraw you can also withdraw money from your account using the metatrader 4 or 5 tool after you trade and make profit uh, and then you can be able to withdraw your money and be able to enjoy your the the, the fruits of your labor and then you can log in to trade account uh, this is simply logging in after opening an account you can log it in you can log in if you logged in you can either depo deposit or withdraw and then the mql5 community this is just a metatrader 5 community where you discuss different things you get news and much more and then uh, as you can see another option here log to web trader you can log into a web trader of your broker different brokers and you can also access them there that is about file in view you simply uh, change the view of your trading platform uh, toolbar status bars and much more symbols uh, how you want to view them market watch and much more and then thirdly you can uh, under view you can also put full screen if you want the chart to occupy the entire screen you can do that and then thirdly insert you simply insert objects uh, indicators uh, for example they are uh, uh, under insert we have indicators objects experts and scripts under insert uh, indicators is where now you can insert trend indicators like uh, the moving averages i'll be able to show you how to set your moving averages over here uh, once i show you how to sketch them 
what I took you through in this lecture was just a snap preview of how to do them. I'll take you deeper into the moving averages, the trendless and the Fibonacci in the upcoming lecture so that you can start using these tools and make profit on your own. And then under objects, you can also, as you can see, we have horizontal lines. You saw me sketch a horizontal line. We have a trend line, a vertical line, a trend by angle and much more lines as you can see fibonacci and much more we uh, you can get uh, you can get the indicators like the moving averages the bill williams indicators and much more under indicators below insert objects horizontal line trend lines fibonacci and much more and then experts a expert MACD and much more will get into that later on and then scripts again you can go into histogram charts uh, sample line chart sample those are just the different types of charts you can sketch and then under charts uh, we have different types of charts i'll be able to disclose this to you in the upcoming part of lecture three bar chart candlestick uh, what i'm using what you can see are candlesticks and then line chart uh, under charts you can also adjust time frames from one minute five minute 15 30 uh, one hour four hours daily weekly monthly and much more we shall be able to go into this later on in detail and show you how it's done under tools you can put a new order uh, under tools or as you can see on the menu bar we have new order you can use this button or come to tools and put new order alternatively you can right click on a currency pair on the side under market watch just right click and you shall see the first option is a new order you can use that to open a position in the market and then under window uh, you can be able to uh, uh, you can be able to customize how you want your window to look like tile vertically arrange icons and much more and then thirdly under help you can find help whenever you need uh, the from the metatrader 4 community whether you are an iphone you have an app on iphone the metatrader 5 app and then android and much more there are different things you can simply inquire for help if you are finding trouble with the metatrader 5 app basically that is everything there is uh, for easy access to all these tools you can have them here as you can see the vertical line is here you can um, you can still get it uh, under insert on objects but uh, it's up here for you the horizontal line as you can see is here and then the trend line we have the fibonacci and much more everything you have is here you can just access it uh, easy access or go back into insert and be able to access everything this is how simple the metatrader 4 or 5 tool is easy to use i'll be able to disclose to you more shortcut ways to customize your charts and much more in the upcoming uh, lecture in part three we shall look at opening a demo account on metatrader 4 or 5 and just to refresh your memory a demo account is what every new trader needs to begin in order to properly learn how to trade the market with a demo account you have what is called virtual money you trade what is called virtual money to ensure that you can learn without losing your hard earned money and if you have the meta trader 4 or 5 tool you can open a demo account there are very many benefits of opening a demo account first no risk to losing your money because you trade with virtual money secondly no identity documents are requested to open a demo account thirdly all positions are automatically opened and closed according to the current exchange rate uh, a demo account is similar to a real trading account so before you can deposit funds and start trading on a real trading account i encourage most of my students and all of my students to first open a demo account in part three we shall just look at how we do that in metatrader four or five let's just head over there as i told you under file you'll find an option to open an account and under the account you can choose whether you want a demo account or a real account uh, if you want to open an account with meta course that's a demo account you just simply tap on next and uh, you'll be taken to a page 
open a demo account to trade virtual money without risk. A demo account allows you to learn trading on stock exchange and test your strategies while doing that. You do not risk anything as you use pure virtual money. Secondly, you can open a real account for live trading. A real account requires additional proof of identity. You'll need to provide copies of identif identification documents, as I told you, either passport or the identification card of your country. And then uh, lastly, connect with an existing trading account. If you already have a trading account, you simply come over here, put your account number and your ab and password, and you are able to log into the MetaTrader 405 tool. So we'll go with a demo. So uh, as I let me just repeat the process for those who do, who are not following. Go to file and then open account. Uh, choose MetaQuotes software. Tap on next. And then choose the first option, open a demo account, tap on next. And then you can put your first name, second name, email address, telephone number, and then uh, use hedge trading, whatever you want, deposit amount, whatever amount, leverage, choose from 1 to 100 to uh, 1 to 500 or 1 to 1000. It depends on what you need. But what you should know, as I told you in the previous lecture that... Uh, Leverage is a double-edged sword. You can make a lot of money with leverage because it helps you to multiply the amount of the money you have in your account. At the same time, it can make you make huge losses because if the market reverts opposite to the direction you had opened, then you'll be able to make huge losses. Tap on Agree after filling all those details and then you'll be able to go to Next and boom, you will be able to be live in your demo account and you'll get a screen like mine where you can be able to see the currency pairs on the left corner and you can be able to right click and open orders and much more. That is basically how we open a demo account on MetaTrader 4 or MetaTrader 5. Part 4, types of trends, charts and rules of plotting. As a rule, prices do not remain still for long in the forex market. Currency prices are either increasing, decreasing, or moving sideways. Price movements of various currencies are defined or is defined as trends. There are three types of trends. An uptrend, when the price is moving up, let's head over here. As you can see on my trend line here, the price is moving up. That is an uptrend. And then secondly, we have a downtrend. When the price is decreasing or moving downwards or dropping as you can see on the chart the price is dropping on my fibonacci line the the price is dropping that is a downtrend and then thirdly we have uh, the non-trading when the price is moving sideways when the price is moving sideways as you can see on my chart that is non-trending for instance here at the point where the price was touching the 100 hour moving average and the 38.2 percent level of fibonacci the price was non-trending or moving sideways and then the price resumed moving downwards and as you can see now as i speak it is moving upwards bouncing off the 23.6 percent level of fibonacci heading over to 38.2 level of fibonacci and touching the 100 hour moving average basically those are the three types of trends and then when we go to types of charts we have three types we have line charts bar charts and uh, japanese candlestick charts you will be able to see these charts and read them in the document in the pdf document basically heading over to my chart you can be able to see as i told you earlier we have three types of charts coming over to charts here you can be able to see we have a bar chart a candlestick chart and a line chart if i want to adjust my chart to a bar chart i simply go to charts and tap on bar charts as you can see my chart has changed to bar charts and if i want to adjust to candlesticks like it was initially i simply touch go to charts tap on candlesticks it will automatically revert to candlesticks and then lastly if i want to put a line chart i simply go to charts line chart and it will automatically change to a line chart 
I'm usually comfortable trading with candlesticks because they reveal to me more information. So I just reset my chart back to candlesticks. Whatever you prefer, whether a bar chart, whether a line chart, or whether you can use the Japanese candlesticks. You can access all these tools up here. As you can see, this is a bar chart. As you can see, this is a candlestick. And then lastly, we have a line chart. So I just go back to my candlesticks. And that is how you customize. If you want to change the color of your candles, you simply right click in the chart and then head over to properties down here. And then as you can see, you can be able to change the bull candle. For instance, mine is the, the bull candle is lime green, as you can see, and the bear candle is crimson red. You can change to whichever color you want uh, to blue to whichever color you want so my bull candle as you can see is uh, green and my bear candle is red put okay so once again if you want to change the color of your candle simply right click in the chart and then head over to the bottom properties and you can be able to change whichever color you want your bull candle you can put whichever color you want your bear candle and simply tap on ok and that will be adjusted if you want to change the background mine is a mint cream whitish you can change it to black for instance it will change automatically you can change it to blue it will change automatically uh, so let me just head over to my usual mint where is it? Where is it? I put any. I love a whitish background. So I'll just put that one for now. Tap on OK. And that is it. That is how you adjust your candlestick patterns and much more. The background and much more. We'll head over to part five, types of orders. There are different types of orders in the market. Uh, after setting up your chart, and trading tool you should know that there are different types of orders as i told you you can open a new order over here or right click on the currency pair on the left you'll access the new order or you can come to uh, tools and you can open a new order uh, let me just tap on opening a new order when you come to opening a new order you will be presented with different types of orders instant execution means you are opening the order right away there are different things you need to do before you open your order first you need to set your volume or the lot size i usually like using lot size one for accounts below ten thousand dollars or around ten thousand dollars then you put your you set your stop loss and then you set your to uh, your take profit then you set your stop loss, then you set your take profit, and then you can either sell or buy depending on your analysis. That is an instant order. And then we have pending orders. There are different types of pending orders, and uh, you will be able to see them. As you can see, we have a buy limit, uh, a buy limit, and then we have a sell limit. We have a buy stop, we have a sell stop. We have a buy stop limit. We have a sell stop limit. Those are different types of pending orders. So basically classified into two instant execution. If you want to open your order at current market price, you use instant execution. And then we have pending orders and there are different types of pending orders. As you can see, we have a buy limit, sell limit, buy stop, sell stop, buy stop limit, and sell stop limit. Let us just head over to the lecture and be able to look at each of these pending orders and see what each one of them means. As you can see, the first order here is a market order. It is an order placed at market and it is executed instantly at the best available price so that is what i call an instant order as you can see here simply going to the market instant execution you can either buy or sell at current market price secondly we have uh, a limit entry order this is an automatic order place to either buy below the current market price or sell above 
the current market price for instance if the euro usd is currently trading at 1.3200 and you want to sell the pair when it reaches 1.3250 you can place a limit sell order and if stock when the market touches 1.3250 the order will open automatically whether you are offline or online so that is a limit entry order as you can see you can set it for uh, the market to open or for you to enter the market that is a, a buy limit order or a sell limit or that's a buy limit or a sell limit then secondly the that was uh, for limit entry orders so we can have buy limits or sell limits and then secondly we have short orders when you go short it means you are selling a currency as we uh, as i told you in lecture two going short is simply selling so short orders uh, is when you are selling or speculate that the price of a respective currency pair or the price of the base currency will go low you sell and by selling you are simply buying the quote currency or the second currency if you buy you are simply buying the base currency and selling the quote currency the first currency pair is usually called the base currency the second currency pair is usually called the quote currency for a, for example here as you can see the great britain pound usd let me just underline it uh, the great britain pound is the base currency and the usd is the quote currency so if you sell you are going short or it is a short order and then four we have long orders when you go long it means you are buying a currency pair expecting the market to rise so that you can sell back your position at a higher price going long is simply buying and then we have stop entry order this order is placed to buy above the current market price or sell below it for instance if you want to trade a long position but you want to enter on a breakout or resistance area you might place your buy stop just above the resistance and the order will open automatically as the price moves up into your stop entry order the opposite is true for a sell stop entry if you want to sell the market then we have a stop loss order as discussed earlier this is an automatic order to exit the market at a particular price in order to limit further losses this order is perhaps the most important order in the forex trading because it gives you the power to control your risk and to limit your losses as you can see in the chart we have a stop loss for each of these order types we have a stop loss uh, in order to limit your losses and then the opposite of a stop loss i think is the next one we have a take profit even though it's not here i think we'll come to it later on we have a take profit if you're not putting a stop loss then put a take profit that is a price point where uh, you want the market to close you out with a profit in order for you to limit losses should the market reverse opposite to the direction of the trend you had predicted and then next uh, we have a uh, trailing stop this order is similar to the standard stop loss order but it moves or trails the current market price as the trade moves in your favor the aim of a trailing order is to lock in most of the accumulated profits as the market continues to move in your favor i use trailing stops mostly in strong trending markets for instance if you let me just close this if you put a stop loss and realize that you've started making profit you can simply adjust your stop loss to follow the direction of the trend uh, you are trading in order to lock in most of the profit so that even if the market reverses uh, it will be able to uh, hit your stop loss in the zone of profit so you simply trail behind the price into the profit zone that is what we call a trailing stop loss next we have uh, a good deal cancelled order this is a manual order to exit the market uh, you must be online to perform this order you can as well request your broker to do it on your behalf this is a manual order if uh, you are making profit you simply close the position manually with a profit if you are making a loss you simply close the position manually with a loss and then good for the day order this order remains active until the end of the trading day that's around 5 p.m 
in the evening. That's it for part five. And then part six, order execution, opening and load sizes and leverage. We shall be able to look at this uh, order opening simply in our trading tool. You can see I told you there are three ways. You go to tools, new order, and then you can be able to access new order here on the menu bar. Simply tap on new order and you can either buy or sell. And then you can right click on the currency pair and you'll see the first option is new order. Uh, using the mobile version, just in my notes, as you can see, uh, the, this is how the MetaTrader 4 appears on mobile. This is on my uh, smartphone, the Android smartphone, as you can see. The currency pairs are there, the currency quotes. As you can see, to open an order, you simply tap on the currency pair, for, in, for, for instance, the USD Japanese Yen, and you'll see options, new order, chart, properties, depth of market, market statistics, simple view, and much more. When you open the order, a uh, new order, you'll come to a page like this. This is the USD uh, Japanese Yen. You have instant execution, as you can see. If you tap on the drop down menu, you will see the other types of pending orders that we had discussed earlier the stop entry order, the limit entry order, and much more. You can choose whichever you want. The first box, as you can see, it's written SL, that is stop loss. And the second box is for TP or take profit. And then you can either buy or sell. That is how you open an order in your MetaTrader 4 or 5 on your smartphone. You will be able to access the notes on how to do that uh, in the document that I've sent over to you. So let's just head over to the desktop tool uh, trading tool or the meta trader 5 on a laptop uh, once you get on new order you tap on new order you can either execute an instant order or a pending order and if it's a pending order you choose either sales a sell limit or a buy stop or a buy limit and then you put your volume for example one i like my maximum trading volume or lot size is one for accounts below $10,000 or at around $10,000, I put my uh, price, the price I want my buy limit to, uh, for my buy limit position to be activated. I put my stop loss, my take profit and much more and I can place the order. If it is an instant order, uh, you can either put, uh, adjust, obviously adjust the volume first to around one, and then I can be able to put my stop loss, my take profit, and I can simply buy or sell. So you simply, for example, right now with the Euro USD, I simply try to buy because I can see the market is retracing. Maybe it will hit the horizontal line here. That is at around 23.6 level of Fibonacci and keep going high and high. As you can see, I'm at negative 4.08 the market will keep going up and then as you can see it has already begun making profit as we speak i'm at a profit of two or three that is 4.08 i'm already in the profit zone sorry because i opened this position without putting a stop loss you just right click on it and then you can be able to modify the position you opened once you right click on the position you can be able to modify it uh, let's just head over to uh, modify or delete modify and then you'll be back to the position you can either put a stop loss a stop loss above for example i've bought i put a stop loss below uh, let me just use this sketching tool uh, minimize use this sketching tool to determine my stop loss then i come over here uh -huh. it's not appearing well let me use the horizontal line i want to put a stop loss below this level that is 1 1.73 1.17380 i simply head over to my order right click modify or delete then i put my stop loss at one point one one point uh, one seven three 
80. I don't need to put a stop loss. I simply modify the order. Now I have my stop loss in place. As you can see, I'm already making a profit of 12.12. And that is how we do it in the market. So I simply close this position. It was just for demonstration purposes. Uh, for closing, you right click on the position below here. As you can see, Euro USD position with a profit. I simply go to close position and that is how i close posi my position i've simply made a small profit there just for demonstration purposes but when it comes to real trading i usually make bigger profits but this is just for demonstration purposes let's head over to the last part load sizes we have different types of load sizes. We have the standard load, the mini load, the micro load, and the nano load. And these, uh, when we talk about load sizes, we are simply talking about the volume. As you can see here, uh, when you're opening a new order, come to new order, we have what we call volume. This is the load size. If you open a position of like one point, that is now a standard load size, one load size. If you go to 0 0.01, that is... Uh, micro lot you can open up to a level of 0 0.01 there are different types of volumes or load sizes as you can see we have a standard at a thousand units a uh, hundred thousand units we have a mini lot at ten thousand unit a micro lot at a thousand that is 0 0.001 0 0.01 or something so the most common lot sizes traded in the forex market include one lot size, the one I usually use, 0 0.1 lot size, and then 0 0.01 lot size. If you have a $1,000 account or less in your retail trading account, ensure you use the smallest lot size possible to minimize your losses. I usually use 0 0.1 on most of my $1,000 accounts, and on uh, most of my $10,000 accounts, I use uh, one lot size to uh, 0 0.01 so the smaller the lot size or the smaller the volume the better you'll minimize your losses even though your profits will be lower but you'll you remain in the market for long to make consistent profit and using a bigger lot size may give you big profits but at the same time if the market reverses opposite your direction it will burn you out and you'll have your account blowing how to calculate pip value and much more you'll check it out in the notes i have included everything there in the notes that's it for this video guys uh, lecture three of the liveversity forex trading course basically this is one of the longest lectures and if you, you have watched to the end then you have a passion for trading Stick with me up to the end. You'll be able to learn a lot of things when it comes to foreign currency trading. Open your email tomorrow for lecture four as we progress going forward. In lecture four, I'll simply take you deep into each and every of these tools that we have discussed. And in lecture four, we start with the Japanese candlesticks. I want you to learn every type of Japanese candlestick and how to customize them on your chart, how to open them and how to predict the direction of the market using the Japanese candlestick. Until then, see you guys. May God bless you.